coming up on The Goodable Show. I'm always telling people, turn off the news. But you know what? Turn on Goodable News. <laughs> the queen of Christmas herself, Danica McKellar, is joining us. And I really believe that it's about how the subject is presented, and that makes all the difference. And, and, I, and I learned that from my own experience. We got all of that, plus amazing stories of how people are helping other people and what you are most thankful for. That's right, we asked you, you told us, and now all of you are part of the show. Are you ready for it? The Goodable Show starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to The Goodable Show. You know it's coming up, but before we start, make sure to hit that subscribe button, get the notifications, and help us bring all of our goodness to the rest of the world. All right, now we're gonna get to Danica in just a minute, but something incredible just happened, and I gotta tell you about it. This is a story that's six years in the making. This is Jamal Hinton. Now you might be thinking, I, I kinda recognize that guy from somewhere, but I, I just can't put my finger on it. Well, here's where you might recognize him from. In 2016, he was out, you know, just hanging out as a regular teenager when he got a text from someone he didn't recognize. Now that person thought she was inviting her grandson over for Thanksgiving, but it wasn't her grandson, it was Jamal. So here's how it all played out. Thanksgiving dinner is at my house on November 24th at 3 p.m. Let me know if you're coming. Hope to see you all. Of course, that includes Amanda and Justin. Who is those? Your grandma. Grandma? Can I have a picture? Of who? You, lol. Yes, here I'm at work. You're not my grandma. Can I still get a plate though? Of course you can. That's what grandmas do. They feed everyone. And that year, Wanda did feed everyone. Jamal showed up to a random stranger's house where they celebrated Thanksgiving together. About to knock on her door. I don't think she knows that we're here, unless she's looking out the window. And the next year... <laughs> Hi! Hi. <laughs> they did it again, and the year after, and the year after, and you know where this is going. This year, the tradition continued. Let's face it, it's been a really hard year, and this is exactly the type of Thanksgiving story that we could all use in our lives right now. And it all started with a text message to a stranger. All right, we're gonna come back to even more amazing Thanksgiving weekend news, but this week we got an incredible guest joining us. Danica McKellar is in the house, and you know we wanna start this segment with a song that might sound a little bit familiar. What would you do if I sang? Danica first became famous as a child star in the series The Wonder Years. Kevin, relax. She literally played America's Girl Next Door, Winnie Cooper, and many of us saw her grow up right before our eyes. I wanted to be the best. So do I. Good. Today, she starred in dozens of roles, many at the Hallmark Network, and now a series of upcoming movies on GAC Family. Wait, what? But something most people don't know is that Danica is also a mathematician and she's written several award-winning books. From Math Doesn't Suck to Girls Get Curves to my personal favorite, Kiss My Math. Did you think I was gonna say something different there? No, Kiss My Math, this is a family show. Danica joined us this week on Goodable's Instagram Live. Hey Danica, how's it going? I'm great, how are you? Good, good. Thanks, thanks for joining us, and thanks uh, for being such an amazing person and um, uh, such a such a fan of Goodable. We're big fans of yours. We love your work. We know this is short notice for those of us that are joining us, but um, so glad to have you on. I'm so glad to finally connect with you. We want to take this time to learn more about you, um, give people a chance to ask questions to you directly. Um, sure. And and I have a few questions. I just want to jump right in, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so first of all, can we um, can we tell people uh, what country you're in, or is that supposed to not be public? I mean, I'm in Canada right now. Yay! <laughs> Same. I'm, I'm shooting. Uh, I'm shooting a movie for uh, GAC uh, Family. The, it's a new channel, very similar to Hallmark, very family friendly, good natured uh, movies, and uh, thrilled to be. It's called The Winter Palace, and it'll be on GAC in January. So, so that's so what I'm doing up here. So tell us a little bit about the movie. Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really, really fun. So I play a novelist with writer's block. My best friend is a property manager and has this big chalet up 
in the mountains in Colorado. Uh, we're shooting in Canada for Colorado. And she's like, look, there's this big, there's a European family that owns it. They haven't been there in ages. Um, you know, the property manager had to duck out, but you could like go up there for a week. You can write on your, your, your book, get past your writer's block. It's beautiful. Great. I'll be, I'll be the caretaker for the house. Sign this contract. I'll be the caretaker, get up there and then, uh, find out. And then the family does show up, of course, including Prince Henry, dashing Prince Henry, played by Neil Bledsoe. But as it turns out, the property manager, like the caretaker position involves more than just being there to make sure that the house doesn't burn down. And she gets all these assignments, like working for this royal family. <laughs> it's uh, pretty fun. It's really cute. Um, have you I'm not ever... going to say that my character and the prince fall in love or anything, because I don't want to ruin anything. <laughs> but... It's uh, it's, it's it's adorable, and um, have, uh, yeah, Neil Bledsoe plays the prince, and he's doing an amazing job. Have Thanks, you, Lindsay. Have you ever been um, to that part of Canada before? Or is it your first time? I've been all over Canada. I know Canada better than a lot of Canadians. <laughs> um, I've shot I've shot in Montreal. I've shot in Toronto. I've shot Hamilton. You know, right by Niagara Falls. I've shot in Ottawa, the capital. I've shot um, here in Northern Ontario. I've shot in Winnipeg. I've shot in. Um, Vancouver, of course, and Victoria even on Vancouver Island. So for so. those of your fans that are um, new to the world of entertainment and to the world of Hollywood and movie making, um, some people out there might not know that Canada is basically like a stunt double for cities in the United States and towns in the United yeah. States. So sometimes if you don't want to film on the streets of New York City, you come to Toronto because there are parts that are like kind of similar. Or, you know, a lot of people who have uh, public profiles and positions and stuff, uh, particularly when they're making movies, a lot of it is just about them, but your social media presence is very different. You're, you're, you're very wholesome, but you also um, post a lot of really good things. What, what makes you want to like bring out the goodness in people like that? I just feel, I, I feel very blessed. I can reach so many people just by posting. I mean, look, there are people with a lot more followers than I have, but it just feels like, how could I not? That's really what it comes down to. How could I not if I have this option. Something that some people might not know is that you're also an incredible author. And, and Thank you. Um, I, we, we love your books at Goodable. In fact, we want to we wanna see if we can actually give some of those books out um, to people who might be inspired to pursue certain careers, especially in math. How did that all come yeah. out? How, how did you transition from, um, obviously people would remember you from Wonder Years where you were you know, a child actor, very young, uh, America's sweetheart for I guess a very long time. Uh, and then you just, you've had this amazing career. Tell me about how that all developed. I mean, how much time do you have? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, I was an actress on The Wonder Years. I took a break for college, got a degree in mathematics because I like a good challenge. And then I got back into acting after that. But I was like, but I miss math, but I miss acting. So I went back to acting and then I miss math. And I started a website where I answer people's math questions, which wow, is so weird. It's just like, 2000 around then um and then acting started picking up more after i got the west wing for a year and uh but then i missed math and and in 2005 i started writing a math book to help kids i just had there were so many people who had come up to me and said oh my gosh i could never do math i you know i had like i was doing fine in math and then i had this one test or this one teacher or this one experience and i never went back to it i never you know and and there was just so many stories of people who obviously felt so discouraged and i really believe that it's about how the subject is presented and that makes all the difference and and i and i learned that from my own experience learning math certain teachers that were very difficult to connect with and other teachers that made it familiar and fun and so i took my love of entertainment my love of math and all the fun logical challenges that that can give you and wrote entertaining math books. And they're all at mckellarmath.com, ages zero to 16, all the way up through high school geometry. And yes, I helped to tackle like common core and make it more understandable for parents too, because that's definitely a, a thing that needs some attention. So we're, we're going to see if we can uh, send some books out to people who follow us and people who are part of this conversation, because we think it's really important for people to get into math, especially young girls who for a long time, um, didn't think that they could pursue careers in engineering or become astronauts. And a lot of those ceilings are crumbling down. But I got to ask you on a personal level, um, every journalist that I know is a journalist because they didn't like math. They, we didn't get into science. We liked reading. Uh, we liked talking. <laughs> we liked telling stories. What is it for you about math that gets you really excited? It's 
it's the way it exercises your brain and makes you sharper. It's a, mm -hmm. It teaches you problem solving. And it, it exercises the problem solving part of your brain to the point where you're now going to be more capable of tackling all challenges, all obstacles. When you stick, when you stick it out in math and you have, you're attacking a problem and you don't think you can do it and you're getting frustrated and you want to give up, but you don't give up, you stick with it, and then you do figure it out, there's this feeling, I used to call it a math high. And that feeling, you, you, you've now created a sort of strength and fortitude that stays with you. And that kind of resili resilience and that kind of knowledge in yourself that you're able to tackle and do difficult things, that you build that and build that. And pretty soon, when you approach your problem, you're like, you know what, this looks hard. It's a good thing I've got me on my side. What are your thoughts on uh, the reboot of uh, The Wonder Years? Yeah, I think they're doing a really good job. It's a really interesting take on on the whole, like, seeing the world from a 12-year-old boy's perspective. And Fred is the executive producing that. So he's directed, I'm not sure if he's directing all of them or just most of them, um, but he's executive producing, he's directing. Thank you so much again for joining us. Um, we're huge fans of what you do. Looking forward to your movies. Um, looking forward to the next book that's coming out. Um, and on a personal note, um, thank you for following our journey at Goodable. Um, I remember we, we connected probably last year, right when the pandemic was kicking off. And you were one of the first people that noticed us. And um, you, you never forget those early people that reached out to say, hey, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I want to say that too. Thank you so much for doing what you do. We need it so desperately in today's world. Just the way the media has evolved <clears throat> it does better when people are freaked out and afraid and angry and outraged. And it's not good for the souls of all the people in this world to have to be bombarded with that news all the time. I'm always telling people, turn off the news. But you know what? Turn on Goodable News. <laughs> all right. If you're like us and you just can't get enough of Danica, make sure that you follow us on Instagram because over there, you just never know who's going to show up on our feed. This week in Goodable Sports, NFL star Trent Brown showed up at his former high school with a big surprise. Before he became a star on the New England Patriots, Brown played high school football at Westover High School in Georgia. He went there this week to surprise 90 students from the football program with tickets to one of his games. He even included transportation, meals, and gift cards so that the kids could buy whatever they wanted at the stadium. Over in Kansas, cell phone cameras caught Wichita State basketball player Dexter Dennis staying late after the game. That's him in the stands there, helping pick up trash that fans had left behind. People reacted quickly on social media and assumed that it might have been some kind of team punishment, but it wasn't. Dexter came out and clarified that he did it himself because it gives him, quote, perspective on life. Wichita State started the season four and one, so you could say that Dexter is winning on the court and winning in life. This year, for the first time, NCAA athletes have been allowed to make money off of their own image. You know, things like signing endorsement deals where they get to keep the money. Well, in Michigan, one college star decided to use that money to help people in an incredible way. This is Blake Corum. He plays football at the University of Michigan. He decided to use his money this year, not for himself, but to hand out Thanksgiving dinner to families in the community. And yup, that is him. He made sure to deliver those meals in person. All right, before we go this week, we asked you to tell us the one thing that you're most grateful for and man, did you deliver. Here are some of your best responses and trust me, some of them might make you cry a little bit. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Stay safe and stay goodable.